What is up everyone? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Now with how much I am really enjoying and loving the shallow scape downstairs with the sort of tree, the umbrella tree I think it's called, coming and growing out of the top of it. I want to do another one. I want to do another tree aquarium, but this time I want to make it different. This time I want to make the tree and I want to make it underwater in this tank. And I'm going to show you how. So a lot of us have probably seen those bonsai tree aquariums where, you know, they've got the little bonsai tree in the corner, a little sandy path and a few rocks and stuff like that. Now, a lot of the time these are made with a pre-made bonsai tree. You, you can buy them in all different shapes and sizes and styles, and that's how you make them. You buy that, you get a bit of moss and you tie it over and away you go. Now, if you watched my recent video that me and Katie Sicklid's done over on the NT Labs channel where we've done like a versus scape off sort of thing, Katie used a bonsai tree in that aquarium. So you can go and watch that video if you haven't already. It was quite a fun scape off, but no, I won't tell you who won or lost actually, because that will spoil it. But yeah, Katie used a pre-made bonsai tree in that aquarium. And it sort of inspired me to, well, go back to my roots. So when I say getting back to my roots, many, many years ago, well, actually 11 to be precise, because the memory came up on Facebook, I think. And uh, yeah, many years ago, me and the team at my old shop essentially made one of these bonsai tree aquariums. Now, did we do it on a normal scale? Of course not. We, well, we were young, we were silly. We thought, well, we're gonna go for the biggest we can. So we done a five foot aquarium with three trees. I think it was three trees going throughout. So it was more, I suppose, a miniature forest rather than actually a bonsai tree, but it looked amazing. Now that design of aquarium was so, so popular in the store. We recreated those bonsai trees or main trees, real trees, whatever you want to call them. We recreated them for so many customers over the years that we had that aquarium running. And yeah, I just saw it, thought it was cool, then went and done the scape off with Katie and then she used one. So it's all sort of come at once and I think we need to redo one. But today's one we are going to make. Rather than buy one, we are going to make one. I'm going to show you how I made the ones all those years ago and I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the one today. And it's going to be, well, a lot cheaper, a lot easier, and well, a bit more personal, I suppose, because we're gonna be using a smaller aquarium. So we want to design it so it fits in this aquarium. So what do we need for a bonsai tree aquarium? Well, the first thing is a bonsai tree. Now you are gonna to have to just search through the bits of wood that you can get your hands on in your local shops and sort of work out which one's gonna be best for you and which one's gonna work for your aquarium. I went searching, actually not in mind for a bonsai tree, to be fair, actually I was searching for another aquarium and uh, I found this piece. So this is quite gnarly. I want to go for that like old withered tree sort of vibe. Now it doesn't matter that this isn't quite the right shape and is obviously too tall for the aquarium at the moment because we are going to do some gluing, some hacking, some chopping and we're going to make the shape work for us. So as I say, you don't always have to look for the perfect bit of wood that's going to look like a bonsai tree straight away. This one, like I say, is too tall and isn't really the right shape. We've not got a canopy, like there's no tree canopy. It would look like a stick with some moss on the end of it at the moment if we were to plant it now. But let me grab a few other bits actually and I'll show you what I mean. Right, uh, oh, hang on. Let's open up my shelf. Hopefully there's not muck on it, there we go. So these are just some other bits that I've picked off my sort of hardscape shelf. So that bit is so cool. That bit is ready to be a tree. Like. We could use that one if we wanted to. It's a bit smaller, but you can see that main sort of stem and you can see the canopy that's growing off the top of it. So most bits you could change into a tree. It's just looking at them differently. So this bit's a bit different, um, but you can see again, you've got the roots coming off the bottom. You've got the canopy over the top. So again, that one sat in the corner would make an excellent tree. Uh, and then these are a bit different. This is manzanita wood, but I've been sort of having a think about this. And I think this would look really cool. And it's too big for this tank. If you were to sort of put it like so, tie it all together, and then you've got a massive tree coming out the corner of your aquarium. And again, then it's just planting it and scaling everything else to make sure it looks like a tree and not just a load of wood in the aquarium. So as I say, most pieces of wood are gonna need a bit of persuasion to make them look like a tree and a bit of sizing up as well. So you can see that this branch at the top is just not gonna work. That is way too tall. And probably also these little branches here are gonna have to come off because that branch there is my canopy. So that's the one I wanna keep. Really, I'm only gonna be using this for that and the roots that are coming off of it. And again, I think one or two of them are gonna have to come off. But no piece of bogwood is gonna look like a tree straight out of the box. So you do have to play around with it. But with enough persuasion and enough messing around with a saw and a pair of cutters, I reckon we can get this one to look quite good. Now I know I'm gonna to have to cut this down quite a bit to size it up, but I think if we cut 
there. So if I just make a mark in it so I know where I'm cutting in a minute. And then I think if we cut all of those little ones off that are poking up, I think that'll be a good start because the trunk will be there and then we just need to re-glue some branches on to make the canopy. Now I'm gonna leave the roots for the minute because I don't know how they're gonna tie in with the rocks because once I get some rocks in there, some of these roots might be at the right height, they might be at the wrong one. Actually, that weird bit can come off the back there because that just looks odd standing down there. But yeah, I think I'll leave the roots until we get the rocks in, but for now, we just need to build this canopy. Now this is gonna be our donor branch because yeah, there's lots of gnarly bits that I can break and cut off of this to hopefully create our canopy on this one. So I think we'll want one coming off of that branch there, something like that. So if I cut or make a mark there, that'll be one branch. And then we want another one coming off the front, which could be that one, or could be that one. I reckon that one there, actually. That'll be a good branch. So let's cut that one, let's say about there. That one feels like it's gonna break anyway. Perfect. So that one will go there. Another one there. That might be it actually, because then we've got that one there. And I don't want any over the back really, because I want to try and keep that open for the filter and I can sort of fill that in. So yeah, I think those two, let me just cut this one off. I think we'll be good. We've just got to get them glued then. That's not gonna cut, that's way too thick. A cut and a snap. Oh, perfect. Right, let's get gluing. So to glue this together, it is gonna to be quite tricky because we're just gluing wood to wood, but we should be able to do it with some cyanoacrylate glue. So this is just Gorilla Super Glue, perfect for this sort of application and completely safe to use under the aquarium water. And then we've got some tissue. Now, all we're gonna use for that is essentially an agent to bond the wood to the wood. So if we roll this up in little sort of sausages and pack it around these bits of wood, we should be able to soak the glue into it and stick it all together as one solid lump. This stuff will go off like concrete once it's done. So I have finished the tree. I think it looks quite good. Look, we've got a big gnarly stem. We've got the roots coming off that we're gonna sort of put in amongst the rock work. And then we've got our canopy that we've made. So you can see all the white tissue on the back look where I've used to glue it. So that's gone rock solid. Now it is like literally like plastic. Um, and that is gonna hold all of that together. I did have to put an extra one on. Uh, where is it? This one, because this flat cut edge that I done was really annoying me. So yeah, I think the tree looks really cool. Now, the next step is obviously to get this in the aquarium. Now, the good thing is obviously I'm designing it from this front. So once the moss canopy's on, you won't see any of this gluey horribleness in the back and it will just be a big sort of canopy of moss. So I think we get it scaped into the tank now. We can start getting our rock work in around these roots and working out if we need to remove a couple more branches before we continue. Now that little layer of sand should stop a lot of the glare and we also close the blinds to stop the light and now we can focus on actually scaping this. So, oh yeah, that's gonna be a perfect size for this tank. Just need some rocks around it to sort of stand it up on a plateau because, well, my idea is that we've got like a, I don't know, a, a wall maybe with just the tree sat on top of it growing through it. So yeah, we've got to work out which rocks we're gonna use and how we're gonna do this.
As I said, I wanted to keep this super simple. So those three rocks positioned like that give me my hillside. And I think that's perfect. We don't want to go too overboard thinking about where these rocks are going to go and how it's going to look. The next step is I'm going to fill in this back area with some sand. And I might place another rock behind it just to give it a bit of depth. Otherwise, it's going to look like I've built a wall. So let's get some sand in behind and see what it looks like. I'm super happy with how that has turned out. It looks like a proper rocky mountainside with this sort of tree clinging on to it. Now, next step is to get our planting sorted or building our canopy. Now for this, we can use loads of different plants, but the ones that I quite like the look of when people have done it in the past is Anubius Nana Bonsai. So with those little leaves, it just looks perfect because once you place it on the tree, it does look like a miniature tree. If you've got expensive taste, then Busa Philandra, depending on the size of your tree, it might cost you a for small fortune to uh, use Busa Philandra on a tree of this scale. So probably not gonna go for that one today, but the last one and the one that I probably like the most is moss. Now I have been growing moss on in one of my aquariums for quite some time now with the thoughts of doing quite a large moss scape. Now I have taken a bit of time in growing on this moss. It has taken me probably a month or so to grow it from a small pot all the way up to a big bunch that I've got ready to use. I didn't know what moss tank I was going to do, but this is going to work absolutely perfect. Oh, and to be fair, all I've been doing is good lighting and then plant boost and liquid CO2 boost in the aquarium with the moss in. That's grown it on an absolute treat. Now that we've decided what plant we're going to use we could at this point just literally start to sort of stick it to the tree and create these branches and cover these branches in moss now the only problem with that is that you end up sometimes if the branches aren't close together with well essentially what looks like a load of sticks covered in moss you don't end up with that tree canopy sort of vibe that i really want in this tank so for that there's a couple of different ways of doing it so this is a pond basket now you can sort of see in the light it's got like a mesh effect to it. Now this one is huge, it's like almost the same size as a tank. But if you cut circles out of this and then essentially sort of place it or glue it or even tie it to the different branches, you can end up with nice big canopies that you can then tie your moss to. Especially if you use the mesh and then you maybe like wrap it with fishing line or cotton thread or something like that so that you end up like almost tying the moss to the plate and then once you've got that well then you've got your canopy it's very simple and you can just stick it or place it onto the top of the tree now that is how we done the one in the shop originally because it's what we had to hand we used the pond baskets because they were in the shop and it worked a treat the way that i'm going to do it today is a way that i done it a few years later on my own aquarium at home which irritatingly i don't have any photos of and that is hang on this now this is pond foam. Now, normally I would use the one that is flat because it's easier to cut and easier to shape into a tree. This is like the sort of bobbly egg crate design. And these are off cuts. I have got loads of these that I used. Um, yeah, used them for a filter. These are the off cuts. Me being me, wouldn't throw them away. So I kept them and they might come in handy for this. Now what I'm gonna essentially do is start placing them and gluing them to the tree. Now it looks a bit weird at the moment, but bear with me. Do not quit out of the video now and go, what is he doing? That looks awful. Trust me, trust the process. It will look good once we've got it glued on and we've cut it into shape. We will have a proper little tree canopy.
this tank stinks of glue now so that is a little bit potent i might have to open a window so you may have seen i've used a few extra sticks and a few extra branches in that little video it's just to really give it a bit more structure a bit more sort of solidness i suppose you would say um but yeah that's working perfectly i've just got to let it dry i just took a breath in from the tank and in all honesty it uh, stinks of glue so i think i'm going to let this dry for a bit and then we can get the moss on top of this tree canopy Oh, actually, the only other thing I might need to do is just shape it. So all I'll do is I'll go around and cut these jagged edges off so we've got a bit more of a, like, circular shape rather than sort of corners jutting out because it might be hard to hide it with the moss, whereas a nice circular shape should hide nicely. Anyway, I'm going to go get some lunch and uh, let this dry and maybe open a window. So we've given it 15, 20 minutes and it is completely dry. It's fairly solid. It's a bit spongy, but obviously it's sponge. It's going to be spongy. We have got... The startings of what looks like a tree. Well, if tree grew black filter foam, then we've got the startings of what looks like a tree. So we are going to get the moss on. I'm just going to shape up the top because there's a big square bit back here that's really annoying me and I think it's going to stick out really badly. And then we can get our moss sort of dome on and hopefully it's all going to stick. Fingers crossed. That's the OK sign. That's fingers crossed. I think the glue is getting to me. Anyway, let's trim this. We've given the tree a trim, now for moss. As for attaching the moss, we are literally just gonna be gluing it. We are gonna be going to town on the gel glue and getting it all stuck down. We might end up using a bit of cotton thread or some fishing line to wrap it around in certain places, but I'm hoping the glue will do the job. Well, I've given the moss hopefully enough time to settle down. Now we just need to fill it and hope everything does not float. Uh, what setting is this on? Ah, gentle, perfect. So there we go, the tank is filled up albeit a little bit murky, but that's not the end of the world. The good thing is nothing floated. Well, a few little strands of the Java moss, but that's not the end of the world. So we've got a little hang on the back filter to pop on here, and it has got a surface skimmer on it. So any of those loose bits of Java moss, hopefully will get sucked into the filter and I can deal with them. So all that's left to do is top this one up, get the filter running, and then, well, in a week or two, we can get some fish. I'm contemplating what fish we're gonna put in here, but I might just leave that up to the sort of will of the gods of the uh, fish shop and see what's in stock at the time I get out there. Let's plug this in and see if it runs. Oh, I hope there's not quite enough water in there. Oh yeah, that's going. That's priming itself, that'll get going. Like so, probably blast all the java moss off of my tree, which won't be ideal. Now, because we want to put fish in here in the next week or two, I'm going to make sure we've got some tap water safe going in because that's going to make the water all safe and happy for the filter bacteria and for the fish. So it's about 10 mil, I think. Yeah, about 10 mil of that. And then the other thing we're going to get in there is some filter starter. Now, the good thing with that is that's going to get the bacteria started and get that all running again, making it healthy and safe for the fish. Where's my 10 mil mark gone? There in just over a week's time. There we go. Obviously we'll test it all and everything before we get any fish, and really it's just to let it settle. Now, as I said at the start, I have been using Plant Boost and Liquid CO2 Boost on my moss tank to grow this stuff on. So if I keep using this in this aquarium, hopefully this moss will go mental. So it's, oh, 
I put one extra of them and it's two of them. Right, cool. I'll see you in a week's time, maybe two, when this is fully settled in and hopefully looking a little bit more, well, clear. It has been just over a week. The water is crystal clear. The moss is still growing. And I also just got off the phone with Jono and Ruby from NT Labs and we're gonna be doing another competition. So hang around till the end of the video to see all the details on that. If you don't wanna hang around to the end of the video, just head over to the NT Labs Facebook page and their Instagram page. Read the terms and conditions on the competition thing. You can win 250 pounds worth of NT Labs stock food, you know, your choice essentially. So yeah, head over there, but there'll be a full competition rundown at the end of this video. But the important thing for the tank today is I want to make a couple of additions. One boring addition, I want some gravel in amongst the rocks. I think that will just finish it off. It will make it look, I don't know, just a little bit more in keeping. I think the bare sand to the rocks just looks a bit weird for me. So a little bit of gravel and obviously we need a few little fish to go in here. And what tree is complete without some fruit on it? I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Now, as I say, the first addition I do want to make is a little bit of gravel. Now, you might be able to see there's a little bit there, and that was a test patch of gravel. It's actually two different types. There's a whiter one and a greyer one, and I've ended up going for the greyer one because I think it will just look good, and it just gives a bit of scale. You know, you've got the big rocks down to the little rocks down to the sand, and I think it just scales up the tank a little bit better. Now, there's going to be no thought to placing this gravel. It is going to be a, a literal chuck it in and let it sort of fall where it wants to fall. And hopefully that looks sort of a little bit natural. Now that I've put that bit of scatter gravel in, I think that ties the tank together quite nicely. So next we have got the fish. No, it's like a dad joke this, it's honestly, it's awful, but it did make me giggle when I saw them in the shop. So I tested the water earlier, everything was all good. We went through pH, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. So everything is spot on with the aquarium and it is ready for our first little group of fish. And we're gonna go for a small group. We've only got six of them and they're waiting in the wings, ready to come in. But I was wandering around the shop and I chuckled to myself because I saw cherry barbs. And what bonsai scape is complete without some fish that makes it sound like a fruit. So I was torn, I was torn between cherry barbs and lemon tetras. That was my dad joke fish tank and it literally, it, I shouldn't have laughed as hard as I did, but I did. So we've got a little group of cherry barbs and then I definitely think we'll get some cherry shrimp to go in with them because then we've got cherry barbs, cherry shrimp, in our cherry tree bonsai aquarium. I think it will be great. So let me go and get the fish. We'll get them introduced and then we can let them settle and see how they get on in here. But I think they're gonna look sweet. Cherry barbs are really hardy and one of those classic fish that I really like. So let's get these introduced. We've done the normal acclimatization that you can see in my other videos and especially the acclimatizing fish video. You can watch exactly how I do it. So we've taken a little bit of time to get these used to the water and away they go. So we've gone two males, four females to keep them happy. Yeah, I think they're going to look really cracking in here. Let's give them a bit of time to settle down and we'll come back and see them. Now we've given them a bit of time to settle down and they're all out and about and they're starting to sort of show a bit more colour and I'm definitely so happy with the choice I've made because the males are going to get that real fire red to them. The females are going to get that like coppery orange with the white belly. Yeah, they're just going to look so good in here against this scape. I am going to have to keep a close eye on the moss and I am going to have to trim it fairly often because with it being that close to the light and with me using the plant boost and liquid CO2 boost, it's going to go mental. I am going to have to watch out for algae as well, but I should be able to keep on top of that quite easy. Having sat here now for a little while and watching all the fish interact with the scape, it's nice to scape aesthetically, I suppose. Would it be aesthetically? Yeah, why not? But it's nice to scape like this and make an actual sort of landscape but I'm looking at it now and ultimately I am a fish keeper and I want to give them more cover. I, I want plants in amongst those rocks. So I'm going to go and try and pillage some plants out of a couple of tanks. And I want plants that are going to fit in with the sort of sizing and the theme. It's getting a bit late and a bit dark outside, but I have just found this in one of my tanks. You not, might not be able to see it that easily, but this is Area Kowlon and I think it's the SP Vietnam version. Now, it's not the best of conditions because it has come out of a tank which has got a lot of duckweed in it and uh, yeah, it doesn't get much light. But I think in these conditions, it will work really well with just some grass tufts poked between the rocks. And also it's going to give the cherry barbs somewhere to sort of hide away and break up a bit of line of sight. I'm just going to be happier. Ultimately, like I say, I'm a fish keeper and I want them to be as happy as they can be.
I am way happier with that. The grass is still in keeping with the size of the tree and how it all looks. But I think that's just gonna give the cherry barbs a little bit more cover, especially when those area cowlons like plump up and they start throwing leaves out. They are gonna look great and it just gives them a little bit more hiding space from each other. I definitely think I've made the right decision there. As I said, it's all very well escaping a tank and having it aesthetically pleasing and pleasing to how you wanted it to turn out. But if the animals aren't going to be ultimately happy in there, then yeah, you really need to change it. I hope you've enjoyed this one and I hope you like the scape. It's a little bit different to what the channel normally has. You know, it's normally a lot more natural and nature style stuff. So having something that's a bit more of a landscape and a bit more sort of designed, I suppose you would say, is quite an interesting one. So uh, yeah, it's good. I'll let you know how this one grows in and I'll keep you updated via Facebook, Instagram, YouTube shorts, YouTube reels, whatever, whatever you call them. I'll keep you all updated on how this tank is doing. So yeah, so I'll see you in the next one competition what is up everyone i hope you enjoyed that video now we have a super exciting announcement to make nt labs and fish shop mat are doing another giveaway now rather than just picking out a name out of a hat and going you've won we're actually going to get you to upload an image of your aquarium these ta-da or upload an image of your pond now there's going to be two ways to enter you're going to be able to enter via facebook now the facebook one's easy because you can comment a picture under the pinned post on the nt labs page that talks about the competition and there you go, you can enter the competition. Make sure you tag your fish keeping friends so they know to do the same, because there is a big prize. It's 250 pounds worth of NT Labs gear. Like there's so much stuff to win in this competition. So make sure you tag your friends. As for Instagram, it's a little bit different because you can't post pictures under the Instagram post. So you just have to tag NT Labs in your aquarium or pond post. Make sure you put in the description that it's for the competition. And there you go, you've entered the aquarium or pond contest. Now the winners will be drawn on the 11th of August. So look out for a few days after that to see who the winners are. And yeah, that's about it really. You can head over to the NT Labs page on Facebook and Instagram and you can read all the rules and terms and conditions and all of that on the post there. Once we've got our finalists for the pond and the aquarium competition essentially, we're gonna be putting it out to you guys to vote. So we're gonna put the four best ponds and the four best aquariums out there. You guys are gonna vote via Instagram, Facebook and YouTube and the winner will then be the winner. How great is that? Another cool competition. Honestly, like, what more could you want? Uh, I think that's it, yeah. Just go over to the Facebook, go over to the Instagram, read the terms and conditions. That's about it, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, yeah, on the NT Labs page or my page.